Hello everyone, welcome to my live stream. My name is Denise Mika Hutchins and I'm broadcasting to you from Studio Mika Arts. It is the first day of May, which means we have a new charity of the month. I chose the Vegan Society, the OG Vegan Charity. Um, I will be making a donation at the end of the month based on my unique viewers count. So please come watch my streams and bring your friends. We're uh, so close to a new record. 30 viewers, 30 unique viewers throughout the month would give us a, a new unique viewers record. There's also a viewer fundraiser going on here on Twitch. It's, uh, the goal is 10 pounds because the Vegan Society is a UK charity, so 10 pounds. And uh, if you would like to make a more direct impact, please donate to that. Um, yeah, so also today is Wednesday, which means it's illustration time. We're going to be working on this piece some more. Before we start on that, though, I wanted to uh, show, and I'll probably show some more once uh, we get some more viewers later, uh, my newest upgrades to my stream, which is a wireless mouse, a really nice good one, and a wireless keyboard, yay. So I no longer have to contort myself in order to uh, do anything on my PC over here, the secondary monitor I always look at during my streams. And now I can be natural and reach over to my mouse in order to click stuff and and, and type things and, and raid at the end of the stream. I don't have to get up and go over over there anymore. I can just do it from sitting right here. It's so wonderful. Oh, I'm so excited. This is my first time. So I've been using the mouse and keyboard on my PC for the past week or so. But this is my first time using it not in front of the PC, but still accessing the PC. Oh, it's so exciting. This isn't related to streaming, but we were also able to set it up so that I have my laptop here, which I use for video calls, meetings and stuff, so that I can have this camera pointing at me while I'm looking at the screen. I can't do that over there on my PC workstation because I have the big nice Cintiq monitor and it's just too big for me to be able to look at the screen and also look at the camera. The camera would have to be off to the side, which makes it awkward for your conversation partner. So these keyboard and mouse are on a USB switch and the camera, so all I have to do is click the button on the switch and they'll come over here to my laptop, which is right here. The camera actually sits on my closed laptop during my live streams. I'm so excited to try it for that. I wasn't able to try it this week because the only meeting I had got canceled. <laughs> but um, anyway, this is what we've been working on for the past several weeks or like two months. Um, because we are on part 18 now, I work on it twice a week, and I realized too, I can do this sometimes. <gasps> oh, I, w I was thinking about how this little camera here, hi, doesn't have zoom. You, you don't have zoom, but this one is the newer updated version of this camera. And this one has zoom and I've never used it before. It's right here in front of me. <laughs> I can zoom way the heck in. So I'm really excited because I'm realizing there's uh, things that I just wasn't taking advantage of that I can use to make my stream a little better. So I don't always have to be. Now, if I want to really show just a specific part, like right there, it's going to be easier to just lift it up because I'm not sure this is optical zoom. I think it's digital zoom. So it's just sort of pulling in. It's just making the image bigger. It's not actually physically moving a lens or something, but okay. Give me a second to get a drink of water because I got started late my stream because we're getting some more training for our puppies and it took way longer than expected. So I'm super thirsty now. <laughs> And I had to rush trying to trying to get all this set up because changing, I had to unplug and plug like almost all of my USB stuff in order to get these new mouse and keyboard and the USB switch 
set up, which meant I had to delete these cameras. They were just, OBS would not recognize them, even though they were still plugged in. Anyway. Ah, oh. there's me chugging some water. So much better. Let me pull my little monitor closer. Secondary monitor. I also adjusted, so I adjusted this anyway. I do it every month to say the vegan society. But I also adjusted the transparency of this border. Me, 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 me. And of this one. Me, 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 me. So I hope that it's not as distracting. I felt like it was nice having the border last week to divide these two cameras so that it wasn't visually confusing about what's what. But the border was so, I want to grab it like a card. The border was so bold because I didn't make it transparent that it seemed to be stealing the show in not a good way. <laughs> it was like the border was what I was looking at when I was re-watching my stream. So now it's the same transparency as here and sort of here. These ones are a little bit different, but anyway. Hoping that's better. I think I might also try to make the border a little bit smaller. Make the camera a little bit bigger. I won't work on it today though. It's time to work on this illustration. We don't have too much left and yet it feels so daunting because what's really left now. Oh man, it's all this wood stuff. I do think I want to finish off the baby griffin's faces though. I was able to get a little bit of shading done on this one, but these two are sad and flat. <laughs> so let's work on that first. Not my Something else great about having the keyboard and the wireless keyboard and mouse now is that I have all this room on my desk over here for stuff like setting my palette. So I'm not all crowded in. As you can see, there's way less stuff. I mean, maybe it's interesting seeing like all my brushes and everything, but it's really hard. And I'm always like, don't knock it over every time I'm moving my painting around. So even though it may be less visually interesting, it's a tiny bit less stressful for me to do it this way. So, all right. <clears throat> I want, these faces are getting progressively smaller. So I'm just going to go with I think this is my smallest brush that I have among my current repertoire. And I do already have, I think this was the color. I have some color already mixed from last week that I used on this face. I don't have any references up right now, any reference images up right now. I'll probably open them later. I mean, maybe, maybe I'll open them. I don't know. I'm, I'm really happy with how how much everything is done. I just want a little bit more shading on the bottom of those feathers there, but anyway, let's get started painting. I've been talking all this time, eight and a half minutes of talking. Let's start painting. Remembering the light is coming from above. It's meant to be a basically sunlit scene. And there's also some, Ooh, this is very strong. I need more water. This is also meant to be a scene among leaves, so a, a strong canopy also casting shadow. So even though the sunlight, the sun's meant to be out in the sun, sunlit scene, and yet it's filtered through the verdure. Some of these lines I'm adding are not necessarily because I think a shadow would be there, but because it just makes it easier to see by adding a little bit of division between areas. So it's more about the illustration than the, than the naturalism of the scene. So for me, an illustration is a form of communication. I'm trying to communicate. I'm trying to tell a story. So that's the most important thing. Am I telling us 
good story? Is it understandable? So if I have to bend the rules of nature a little bit to make the story work, then I'm happy to do that. It looks so much better and all I did was add a few little lines. Oh, let me see if my zoom. Oh, look, you can see. That's so nice. <laughs> I've had this camera for years and I never use a zoom. <laughs> I feel like I've been neglecting the camera itself. Okay. This little baby. Should have started with this one. I have to turn it upside down. Maybe if I zoom in, it might actually... Nope, it goes right behind the chat box. <laughs> no. Figure out what I want to do. Okay. Get more of this brown color. <clears throat> this one especially needs some help around where the jaw is closed. Right now, it just looks like a big blob of red. Because <laughs> of these red, red beaks. I'm adding shadow on this side, very light shadow, just a little touch. So I figure with this parent here, they're going to be generally blocking light, but over here we have no indication of what might be blocking light. And then, if nothing else, this gives the face a little bit more dimension, regardless of how, how logical it is uh, with everything else going on. I mean, hopefully it will look logical, but even if it doesn't, giving it some dimension is worthwhile. way more it's way more rounded looking nice I am going to take my little towel and dab a little bit off the forehead if I can it seems a bit too strong there so I'm actually gonna add a little bit of water there that's as good as we can do so we'll leave it there Since I have so much room, I can open... Ah, oh, this is so great. Well, you can't really see what I'm doing, but I have enough room now to open this up so that this side can be for wiping the brushes and this side can be for just setting the brushes. I like to set them on the towel because they're less likely to roll away because of the texture of the towel. <clears throat> I'm being fancy and organizing them by size. So nice. Wow, okay. Is this dry enough to add a little bit more? Let's see. So I like how it's looking, but it's sort of all faded into one another down here, so. I'm going to add a little bit more shadow. Smooth it out a little bit, soften it a little bit. Okay, 
we'll see how that dries. Of course, I'm going to do ink at the end, so... Well, not at the end, actually. There's a lot more to do after I do ink. Ink is going to be next. So I don't need to do too many fine lines and details with the watercolor because there's a even more fine media coming. I'm going to add a little bit more on this farther back baby. a little bit more uh, definition to the beak. It's closed. Oh, gotta push my brush so that it goes into a more of a point. It was a little too flat. That's the problem with painting upside down sometimes. It's nice because you can get your hand out of the way and continue painting while other areas are drying. But then it's a little bit more difficult to recognize what exactly are you painting. And I realized I missed a complete line where the beak comes together. I missed that line right at the very tip. Ah, I've got it now. So what's next? The Baby griffins are pretty well done. Oh, I remember. So now I do, oh, I was reaching over that way out of habit, but no, I have my lovely mouse here now. I need my reference images. Oh, this is the best, okay, just, oh, it's so nice. I can see better doing it like this because before when I had to contort my body, I guess it made it more difficult for my eyes to register because I was like contorting my body but then I had to turn my head the other direction a little bit anyway this is awesome I'm so happy let's see we're gonna move this to a new window and all the other ones I feel like I'm going to be much more able to find whatever reference image I want now which makes sense but it's different actually experiencing it versus just feeling it. Okay, put that window over there and bring it down. I've got to rearrange my digital workspace here real quick. Oop. Okay, there. So there's that baby with its beak open, but that's the wrong species we need. Ah, go. Let me just stay right there. <laughs> they have black markings on their beaks. I'm looking, I found one image, but I want to look at some more different young little pied cormorants because I believe, unlike the adults, which have about the same black marking just coming down the middle of the top of the beak, I think these younger ones, it's kind of spotty and some have more here, some have more there. I just want to verify by looking at more than one reference of a baby. So there's one versus this one. Okay, I see. So there is an overall pattern. It is a little bit different individual to individual, but in general, the very end of the beak is black and it goes back to the eye, tapers to a very small line going to the eye. So I'm going to use my next biggest brush to do this. And let's just use whatever this dark color is that I already have mixed on my palette. It's probably as good as anything. Let's try this. It is kind of, uh, it's a little nerve wracking putting black on here, but it's definitely, it's definitely needed. It's not subtle. These black markings are very clear. So, applying that. Let's 
see, it comes down towards where the beak opens. All right, and make this tip a little bit more defined, beaked tip. Good, okay, let's do the other side. So we might be able to see a little bit coming down this farther side of the beak. And now the bottom. Ooh, this is tough because it's putting it right next to right next to these black feathers, so it's really... I don't want to lose the shape of the beak, so I'm gonna be really light-handed <laughs> with it. Yeah, dab away so that it's not too much being right next to these black feathers. This is another instance of working on the illustration rather than working on some naturalistic depiction. It sort of comes down. But it comes toward the corner of the eye. Like that, something like that. Of course these are griffins and not actual little pied cormorants, so if it's not exactly the same as the Natural animals, okay, because this is a griffin. actually really hard <laughs> it's really hard to apply this and feel like I'm doing it accurately but this is just how it will be for this one all that good. I don't want to mess with it too much. If I keep adding more, then it will become too much. I'm running out of space. I can't keep adding. So I guess I'll work on this farthest one and then so that I don't have to turn it upside down and then I'll work on the one in the middle. Hopefully, so I can set my hand on the one in the middle because it's not wet right now. Work on this one, and then hopefully this one will be dry so that I can set my hand on that one to work on the middle, the middle griffin. Makes it look like it has a little um, mustache. <laughs> so I'm noticing as I'm doing this is that they also have a little more black on the top of their heads here next to the eyes. I'm going to add that to these two.
I'm trying to do a little bit of shading just by layering the same color. Well, that's pretty good. We'll call that good. I don't want to mess with it too much. I'm also a little bit confused about this line. I keep leaning over to use my mouse and it's right here. I'm confused about this line. Okay. Okay, good. I'm not wrong. The line has nothing to do with the mouth opening. The line is above the mouth opening. It connects the tip of the beak to the eye. It does not connect the tip of the beak to the corner of the mouth. So I was like, well, it has two different lines, but that's how it is. So <laughs> I'm not doing it wrong. All right, let's put this one down and get the slightly larger brush again. Just as I hoped, since it wasn't a very heavy application of paint in the first place. This one's nice and dry. The one on the far left is nice and dry so I can work on the baby griffin in the middle. I'm just waking up more of this bit of paint that was already mixed on my palette. Seems to have some blue in it. But also looking at it, maybe some brown. I don't remember what exactly I used it for, but it was probably these feathers. Okay. Oh yeah, this is another kind of problematic placement because it's right next to the feathers. I'm gonna paint and then I'm gonna dab. Paint and dab. Right now, it is totally disappearing into the feathers. We do not want that. Do not want it to disappear. Took a little more than I wanted off, so let's apply a bit more to bring it back. I'm trying to find a nice balance so that it looks like the tip of the beak is black, but so that it's not just disappearing into these feathers that are right behind it. Worst case scenario, I will put a little, I probably will do it anyway, but I'll put a little touch of highlight on the beak. It makes sense anyway, since it's going to be a shiny texture and that'll help bring it out on top of these feathers. So let's dab one more time. Try not to take too much but take enough. <laughs> there. Let's just let that dry and see how that goes. Although I'm looking at it I want a little bit more water here. Smooth this line out a bit more. There. That's good. Looks like they have little, looks like a little mask that goes on the very tip of the pink. <laughs> I think the next thing I want to do is work on giving the bodies of the baby griffins a little bit more dimension. I've got a little bit happening 
Oh, this is a perfect time to use my zoom. Ha <laughs> ha. There's a little bit happening right, right here versus here. That's working out pretty well. But here we've got mystery lighting <laughs> coming up when this should probably be one of the darkest points in the whole image because we've got the nest all around. It's the underside of the griffin, etc. So let us, oops, press the wrong direction. Let us work on that next. So I'm pleased with how the adults are looking. I don't feel like I need to add anything to them. At least not with watercolor. They have, I am especially pleased with the shading on the dark parts. So I want to get to that point with these baby ones. I do have a good amount and an all right amount of the paint that I've been using on their beaks, but I think it would be nice to mix some more because this is their, their bodies have been giving me trouble the whole time because it takes way more paint than I expect. So I am just waking up my biggest brush, which I guess I didn't properly rinse out from before because it's all crunchy. But that's the great thing about watercolor. You just gotta put light pressure on it in the water bowl and tap it and it will just wake right up and the paint will come right out. I won't say it's impossible. I'm sure anybody could figure out how to do it, but <laughs> it's very hard to accidentally ruin your brushes with watercolor. Okay, brush is good. Let's get some brown. My favorite brown, the whole reason I changed to this other palette. I'm actually gonna hold it over here so it's easier for me to mix. It's great for me to be able to reach my hand since I'm left-handed and just reach over to my left, but mixing it, it's much nicer to have it here in the front. I know you can't really actually see me mixing it, but I don't want to hold it over the over the painting. So I'm holding it over here where if I spill or splash, I probably won't get it on the, the image. So sorry, you just have to watch the plastic bounce around a little bit. <laughs> that's, that's the best that it's going to be. I'm just trying to, I can, I'll show you this at least. I'm just brushing in the well, waking up this dark brown paint. I have plenty of water, but you have to brush the water into the dry paint enough to release the, the dry pigment, wake up the medium. So if you just put a wet brush on a dry bit of watercolor paint, you're not gonna get very much color work the water into the paint. Okay, that's probably good. Let's try to soak that up and deposit it on the mixing part of my palette. Hopefully I'll mix enough because we should not need as much as was necessary to just fill in the feathers all together. This is just for shading. I'm going to set it down now and squeeze this brush out to get any little drips out. Okay, excellent. And let's go and get a little bit black paint. The black paint, I use, uh, this palette is full of Sakura Koi colors. Sakura brand Koi watercolor line, I guess. That's what they call their watercolor line. The black paint wakes up really easily. The only one more easy to wake up is the white paint. You gotta be really careful <laughs> because once you add that white paint in there, it's really hard to, to make up for it if you add too much. Right, let's get some more. More black. We want a brownish black for these babies. 
That's what I determined earlier. The parents have a greenish black, the babies have a brownish black. But I also want it to be really close to black. Way more black than brown this time because it's meant to be a shadow color. Okay, set my brush in there for a sec and wipe my fingers off because I squeezed the paint onto the palette. Make sure I got as much out of that brush as possible because I'm not going to use that brush for painting, just for mixing this time. It's getting close to what will be break time today. Since I got started late, I'll take break at uh, 45 minutes. That'll be the halfway point. I might take a little bit extra long break because the dog training going long also meant that I didn't get to eat my snack and I'm very hungry. I was just gonna have some buttered toast. <laughs> so, I love that Ezekiel bread because it's full of protein. Also, it's just so, it's so robust that it's like a meal in and of itself. I was just gonna have some Ezekiel bread with melt vegan butter. Mm -mm -mm. I haven't gotten to eat it so so hungry. Take a drink of water to tide me over for five minutes. I know I say I'm gonna take a drink and then I just guzzle. I guzzle down like a whole eight, twelve ounces all at once. I'm so hungry and also thirsty. Okay. Let's see, let's see. All right, let's start. Let's work on this one first, because we do only have five minutes until my prescribed break time. Actually, I'm gonna use this smaller brush. My third biggest brush for this project. It's size two. Let's see, do my best to create some sense of a volume and shape through the shading. And, the, and add to the direction of the light as well, of course. Volume, shape, and lighting. Thanks to the lighting, that's where the volume and shape comes from. also helps separate body parts for these particular griffins because they're all black so it's hard to see the claws right here the little feet are gripping the adult but it's hard to tell that because it's the same color as the feathers right behind it so hopefully this will help that break I want to remember to get some eye drops in too so my contact lens keeps sticking sticking to my eyelid when I blink and then it's blurry for a second ah that's already so much better yay yeah I think I'll leave that like that I'm going to use ink on the feet later for some more details to show the talons and maybe some of the wrinkles on the knuckles Three minutes until break time. Let's see what we can do with this one. Cause I'm, I guess we could add a little bit more. Oh, hold on. no, we won't work on this one. Look at this tail, it looks pretty flat. We can add a little bit more to it to give it a little bit of roundness. And I'm just using a damp brush 
to feather it out a little bit, make it a little smoother. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, we'll leave that like that. Oh, uh, maybe it would be better to take break now. Because if I take break now, I won't be stopping in the middle in the middle of someone else. Okay, so that's what I shall do. Ah, oh, this is gonna be so great because in the future when I have set up a little be right back screen that I just turned on, I can so easily do that thanks to my my lovely mouse. Yay! For now though, still old school put a little be right back sign on here. I'm gonna take I'll try to make it five minutes, but I'm going to make my snacks, so it might be a little bit longer. Uh, but I'll be back as soon as I'm done with that.
Hello everyone, I'm finally back from a break. I don't know how long that actually took. I think it was longer than I expected, but I am so much more satisfied because I have my tasty toast. It wasn't just the Ezekiel bread, it was the um, cinnamon raisin Ezekiel bread with the, with the melt butter on it. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Take a drink water to wash it down and let's get back to work. It's only a little bit over. Oh, let's see. 15, 29. Wait, what? I'm confused. 14. 15. Yeah, a little over half an hour. Oh my gosh, I don't even know what time it is. <laughs> I'm like looking at my watch and I cannot calculate. Well, there was a lot of interesting different stuff today, so my brain is like already dealing with a lot, already processing a lot. So the RAM is, is um, not overloaded, but it is working through a lot of computations. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we have half an hour, which we can make a lot of progress in half an hour. So let's get going. Get my third biggest brush, this one. I did my best, I'm going to look real quick, I did my best to wipe my hands real well after eating that tasty toast. But I want to visually verify that I don't have any crumbs or little, little bits of butter or whatever. No, my hands look clean. Okay, good. Alright, let us add some more shading to this one in the middle. The griffin in the middle, baby griffin in the middle. This is another one where there really should be not that much light at all hitting because this baby's wing will be casting a shadow. This parent here is blocking some of the light. And then this is just underneath and there should be not that much reflected light because there's this nest here catching a bunch. And here I'm doing little sort of hatching marks to hopefully get a feathery texture as well. So not just shading, but also texture right here. And right here behind the head where the neck is arcing backward in between the two wings. Probably a good deal of shadow here and the hat also casting some shadow. Pollen is real. Pollen, well, pollen is real. The pollen allergies is real. Hasn't been as bad as when it first started. But yesterday, for instance, I was petting the uh, neighbor's outside cat, which we, I, don't, I wouldn't call it take care of, but we, we treat we treat them with some food whenever they come over, or whatever. I was petting them, and this black cat, and they became a green cat <laughs> because of the pollen from the poplar tree. <laughs> so, that's how much pollen there is, is the black cat becomes a green cat just by rolling around. So my nose is more runny than usual. That's what I'm getting at. Alright, 
that's probably good. Maybe add a little bit more under the hat now that it's dried. Specifically showing the hat casting some shadow. So there might be a little bit of reflected light coming around off of the back or something like that, but right here I think it needs some distinct shading. And then that helps actually give the hat itself more dimension by showing that it is casting shadow. That it has substance enough to cast a shadow. <sighs> Alright, let's call that good for this one, at least for now, and move over to this one, which the main area I want to tackle right here uh, is right here, but also I was thinking this little part probably should match. I painted this dark gray color in all of the negative spaces in the nest, but right here probably we could see the body coming through, so maybe here as well. So let's start back here doing that. So otherwise without this little glimpse through the branches, it looks like the nest is some solid thing when it's really not. It's a conglomeration of many small pieces. I think this might not dry dark enough. But we'll let it dry and then add another layer on top. <clears throat> oh, I need to drink more water just to clear my throat. My throat's all gooky. It's because I ate so fast, I think. Just like, nah, 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 nah. I tried not to eat too fast because I didn't want to choke or something. But I also <laughs> was aware of my stream just sitting there. I just stood up and ate my toast right, <laughs> right, right behind here. <laughs> Mm, it was super good, delicious toast, totally satisfying, toastily satisfying. So I'm trying to keep in mind the shape of this griffin where the light's coming from, things that would be blocking the light. Also texture, I'm trying to get a little bit of feather texture on here. Specifically, I want the feather texture on the wings because the rest is a pretty fluffy kind of texture, like little teeny tiny small feathers. So it's just really plush looking. But the wings have a little bit more structure to the feathers. You're hearing that slopping sound. It's Aoife licking herself. Yep. In a second, I'll try to get her to stop. She's. My suspicion is something happened with the pollen gotten in in between her paw pads, and then she licked at it, and it's gotten worse. 
because it's just all inflamed. There's no obvious wound or anything, but it's really red and she keeps licking it. So I think she's having pollen allergy issues too without having actually taken her to the vet to figure it out. But in a second, I shall get up and try to distract her because it's just like when you have some irritation on your skin, I imagine, as a human. It, you scratch at it a lot, it just makes it worse. And I think that's what she's doing. let that dry and let's see I'm gonna get her favorite treats down and Chappie will get one too I'm checking down 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 good girl okay Aoife Aoife down. Sit. Down. Good girl. There you go. I need a GoPro to wear on my head so you can see my view of the cute puppies. <laughs> That's it. Hopefully that was enough to distract her. Okay. Oh yes, let's paint a little bit more in these smaller spots here. Oh, didn't distract her for very long. She's already licking her paw again. It's a different paw though. She's licking her front paw. Hopefully she's not getting uh, irritation in the front paw too. Eva. Eva. It's okay, girl. Good girl. She's looking at me. So did you say my name because you had some more treats or <laughs> getting this sort of glow effect from right here so I'm gonna put a nice big patch of black paint right here something about this I'm gonna try not to spread it around too much it keeps drying way lighter than I want it Hopefully that's good. Paint a little bit in this. Oh good, Aoife curled up. Paint a little bit in this little nook. Yay! let that dry for a second and look at my reference images I 
Let's see if there's anything more I feel like I should do or if I should just let it be. Oh, my battery is low. Why is it low? My battery on my watch is low. I'm just looking back and forth between what I'm seeing here and what I'm seeing of the photos of these these cormorants I think this is probably good if anything I might have done a little bit too much on the wings of course I can uh, scrape a little bit away later at least to get some highlights was in the photograph it's quite reflective and not very dark it's this fuzzy kind of stuff that's on their head and their necks and chest that really captures it captures the light so that you can't see the light and it's a lot darker I guess I'll do a little bit more on this area Yeah, and the head of this griffin should be casting some shadow here with this mouth open like this. Let's see how that looks. Let it dry and see how it looks. Now I'm just looking at the image as a whole. Add more black to the beaks after all. They're looking a little too faded. At least we can add some some lines that can indicate the shape of the beaks. Let's make this brush point here. So something like this.
Oh, that's much better. They were just looking so flat. Oh, I see. I did not work on these tails yet. Is this dry? I'll try working on it upside down, maybe. Oh, but is this dry? Aha! Okay, I'm just going to give it a second to dry. Let's see if I can get this camera a little bit closer. Then I have to move... <laughs> Move the image away anyway. Ah, ten minute. Ten minute warning just came up on my watch. trying to make this a nice smooth transition because the bottom part of these griffins are a lovely fuzzy animal called a tiger coal. Never did look up whether I'm pronouncing that right, but it's got an even texture to its fur. So I want an even bit of shading. That seems pretty good. Still have a decent amount of time left, but I think we're done with the baby griffins for as far as watercolor is concerned. I'll put some chapstick on real quick. That's better. As I really liked how everything dried. I mean, it dries pretty fast, but as I was looking at this over the weekend, especially I was pleased with how the, the mouth turned out on this one with its gaping mouth. Really nice 3D effect, I think. I was leaning over to use my mouse again, forgetting that I have this nice New setup. I don't have to lean over anymore. Suppose I can darken up this one's eyes a little bit, at least on the mm, on the bottom half. Looking at this reference image, let's get a darker blue. So right now, the eyes that are open look like sort of buttons that have just been s slapped onto the face. <laughs> so let's give them a little bit more dimension. Oh, Exy, hello! Oh, that's okay. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. How are you? I'm so glad you could join me. What is all this stuff? Hold on, let me look at this. What is this? It's a little... What is this? Do 
GLHF pledge. I don't know what that is, but it's a little, it's a little, look like a little key <laughs> next to your name. <laughs> I'm so interested by it. Oh, wonderful. I'm so glad you're doing all right. Yay, you're welcome. Oh, I'm good too. Yep. I mean, I got started a little bit late, but not for any bad reason. So just rolling with the punches and just still making progress on this piece. So that's all that really matters. Let's see. Oh, and I'm so pleased. I want to show you. Let me do these eyes first, though. <laughs> okay. Look what I got! Oh, wireless mouse! Yay! Look what else I got! A wireless keyboard! Yay! <laughs> so I can raid from right here and I don't have to contort my body all the time and stuff. It's so great. This is my first stream using them. And it's kind of like when I first put the chat on the screen. And I forgot that the chat was there, and so it was still reading every single message. It's the same thing. I keep turning over here to reach my mouse when my mouse is just right over here. Oh, interesting. Well, you're always well behaved, so I believe you. I believe the badge. You earn that badge every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm so happy with them. There's, they're solving problems I didn't even realize I had, having a wireless a wireless set of peripherals. It's, it's just so nice. And they do. I purposefully wanted like ones with the LED lights and stuff so that they would look cool. <laughs> so it just makes it fun to use them. And the keyboard is a mechanical keyboard, just like my free write, which I use for my first draft writing. And it's so weird. I don't know. I haven't looked up if other people experience this, but I make way less typos using this keyboard. And I don't know if it's because it's the mechanical keyboard or if it's because the keys are like slightly spaced away from each other. Because I had the ergonomic keyboard before with this, so that it's like this instead of like this. But I made plenty of mistakes while typing on there. And this one, it's uh, way easier to type without looking and not making mistakes. It's really, really great. And this mouse, I can set it to be go to the beat of my music. <laughs> so, I was like, oh, uh, I don't like it as much. I just have it on the rain, cycling through the rainbow, but it was fun to like watch it go when I was testing out what can it do. Ah, oh, this is so much better for this eye. So now it's not like a weird button. It's not a Coraline style button eye. <laughs> Make it more round. Make it more round. Like a, like an eyeball. There. And these ones too, just adding that little bit on the bottom. Ah, oh, makes it so much better. Oh, we only have a couple minutes left. Oh, really? <laughs> you have the same one with the, this little, what is this called? Basilisk. This one was called Basilisk. It does plug in on the front to charge. Oh, there you can see. Plugs in on the front. So I made it a task in Habitica for me every night to plug them in so that I would definitely have plenty of charge by the time I get to live streaming time. I like it so far, this mouse and the and the keyboard too. Very happy. Use my birthday money to get them. Make some streaming upgrades. I want to add a little bit more to increase the eyeball and not button effect. Let's do the same over here with my last little bit of time. Looks so much better. Oh, I'm so happy. 
I did not realize how much these eyes were bothering me until I added more. And, oh, they look so much better. They look integrated into the whole scene now. And before they were kind of just eh, these little beacons <laughs> standing out. Oh yeah! I'm excited to see if we have the similar, even if we have the similar mouse, even if it's not exactly the same, that's still really cool. <clears throat> okay, there's less than a minute left, so let's do a little close-up look at what we did today before we raid without having to get up to, to raid. So we finished up, pretty much finished up the baby griffins, added plenty of stuff to the faces, shading and these black markings that are on the beaks, more shading on the bodies. And did that for all three of them. Also added more shading in between these sticks for the nest so that it looks more natural. This body should be showing through. It wasn't before. And yet, oh yeah, the eyes. The eyes are so much better. Oh, it doesn't want to focus. Oh, there it goes. The eyes are so much better now, if I do say so myself. Ah, yay. Tomorrow, I should not have to be late because I'm going to just leave this set up as it is. Well, I'm going to move my keyboard back over there to use some PC after I'm done, but yay. Tomorrow, I should have full two hours to work on this. It's going to be great. We're so close to done. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. That is so generous. <laughs> it's perfect. It's nowhere near done, but <laughs> okay. Let me switch what thing I'm using. <laughs> my keyboard for the first time over here. So exciting. And I, I still got to do my same thing. Open a different instance of Twitch, a different tab with Twitch, because if I don't do that, I can't tell if the raid actually worked. Raid. Oh, but who shall we raid today? Let me, let me look on my phone. Oh, <laughs> yay, I'll be looking forward to chatting with you tomorrow. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm so happy that you could stop in for however long. Oh, let's raid the, the only, wait, Lola? No, that's a story. Oh, she's not, I thought that the new person um, that I followed, but she's not streaming right now after all, so... Um, uh, G squared dad is streaming that person that we, uh, streamed who was doing Suikoden, but he's playing AU Dan Chronicle, which I don't want any spoilers. So, uh, let's just go raid David Peterson, our usual Wednesday person. Let's see what he's doing. David Peterson. Did I spell it right? I think I did. Enter. Yay! See you tomorrow, Xy. All right, the raid has been created. That's it for today. I'll be back tomorrow with more of this illustration. I hope to see you then. The raid is ready to go, so let's go. Boom. The raid worked, so if you're still on my channel or watching the recording later, that's it for today. I'll be back tomorrow. Thank you for watching.